be sure what you are writing about, somebody is actually searching for it on the search engines. And the biggest search engine is anybody? Google, Google of course, yeah. So uh, to do uh, uh, keywords research, we use some specific tools. For example, one of the most popular tools is Ahrefs. As you can see here on the, on the top image, that's the how it looks like. So when you feed some words into this software, it can actually tell you how many people are searching for this thing. For example here, I did uh, put the, the words best laptops. That's what we call a buyer intent keyword. Somebody who is looking for the term best laptops is somebody who is uh, looking to, to buy a laptop, a good laptop. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there are actually 59,000 people. This is the US. Uh, 59,000 people are searching for this keyword. But when you, you look down there at the difficulty, it is 72. That is something for a beginner you, d you wouldn't go for. Uh, anything above five, a difficulty of five on this software uh, is something uh, you would stay away from. Y so that's what we call competitiveness. You have to also look at the possibility to monetize a keyword. Some keywords are very difficult to monetize, especially uh, informational articles. For example, how to uh, maybe plug in a bulb or how to uh, something like that. So you have to be sure what you are writing about is something you can monetize. For example, for laptops, somebody is actually uh, looking to buy a laptop. So you can maybe become an affiliate to somebody who sells a laptop, for example, Amazon, and make uh, some commission from it. So uh, when it comes to domain hosting and WordPress, uh, you have to be, uh, when selecting your domain name, it has to be something short. Don't go for something very long. You have to be something people can remember easily and something that uh, reflects what you are writing about. Uh, it, uh, for hosting, you have to choose a hosting that is reliable, maybe, and very fast. Uh, some of the best hosting companies, for example, SiteGround, you know, uh, you can go for them. Uh, when you come to WordPress, uh, you have to work with some very useful plugins. For example, uh, you have to uh, have Yoast SEO. This will be helpful when you are doing SEO for your site. SEO, for those who are not aware, is what we call search engine optimization. We shall come to it later on. When it comes to content, uh, the articles you shall be posting on your website, you have to work with something around 30% uh, uh, money articles. Uh, those are the best, maybe the best laptops, and about 70% uh, informational articles. This will make your site more favorable uh, in the eyes of Google bots. Because if you fill your site with uh, buyer intent keywords, they'll just see your site as something that is there to, to make money. So you have to look natural. Uh, uh, when selecting the, the URL for a specific article, it also has to be short. Uh, the content should also be long. Google loves long content. Uh, somebody known as Neil Patel, one of the top guys who do SEO, did a research and found that uh, the average length of an article should be around 1875 words. When it comes to the other thing is what we call heading tags, you have to have H1, H2, and HD. That's something technical. Maybe you can do some Google research about it. <laughs> what heading tags? do, if I can mention, is that uh, they tell Google, the Google bots, when the Google bots are scanning your sites, they don't go through all the content. They <coughs> go through the headings so that they can determine what actually your uh, article is about. So you have to be very keen on your heading tags. You have to include your keywords in your heading tags. Then, of course, images. Images are very good for user experience. They are also very good for SEO. There is what we call ad tags. Uh, you shall actually be ranking on some images because some people are actually searching for images for certain uh, content. When we come to SEO, this is the elephant in the house. This is what is giving most people who are doing uh, affiliate marketing uh, a big challenge. So you have to uh, do on-page and uh, on-page SEO and off-page SEO. When it comes to on-page SEO, what actually SEO helps your site to do is that it helps one site to uh, actually rank on top of the on top of the uh, search engine ranking pages, uh, and the most uh, 
uh, profitable positions to be is position one, two, and three. Uh, as you know, I even if it's you who is searching for them for something, you actually uh, click on the either the first uh, result or the second or the third. So being on the first page of Google uh, means money for you. Uh, so when it comes to on-page uh, SEO, you have to do what we call interlinking. You have to link it between one article and the other between the home page and an article so that uh, you can pass what we call the link juice. Uh, because maybe uh, one of your articles has re received quite a, a, lot, a lot of uh, backlink, so you have to pass that uh, link juice uh, from one page to the other to the other page. You also have to uh, do what we call uh, ensure some of your links are do follow and the others are no follow. What uh, what those does is that do follow links uh, uh, are what uh, the search engines use when ranking pages but uh, they usually ignore the no follow links. So your affiliate links, those which are pointing to maybe commerce websites, for example, Amazon, you have to make them no follow. Uh, when I was starting, I actually was not aware of this. So all my links so I'll <laughs> do, do for it. So I was sending all my links just to Amazon. Once I learned that, I was able to increase traffic of one of my newest sites by about, as you can see in the image, there's about 5,000 uh, five thousand and ninety-five percent. This is data from uh, another uh, keyword research tool known as Semlash. Uh, so when it comes to off-page SEO, uh, you have to do what we call guest posts. Uh, uh, you you request for posts from website, then they, they have a link for your blog. Uh, you also have to build what we call PBNs, private blog networks. These will just be for posting uh, articles and sending links to your main site. SEO is mainly about links. So Google looks at your website and how many links are pointing to your website. Uh, the other thing is you can do blog commenting. You know some blogs have comment love, so you can comment and uh, leave a link. Uh, but uh, those are usually uh, not very very useful because most of the links are no follow, but they are, they are good for signals. Then you can do forums, you know, uh, in your niche. You can do social media. Uh, this is for what we call social media signals. And then uh, you can also do a one re uh, redirect. This is where you can get uh, expired domains and purchase them and then redirect them to your site. This will tell Google that maybe uh, the former site uh, uh, was redirected to your site. So all that linkage will be uh, credited to your site. The other thing is about monetization. So I have my blog, I have done my SEO, I have done my content. So how do I make money out of my blog? Uh, these are some of the ways you can monetize our blog. Actually, some of them have been mentioned, for example, by Mr. Odwal here, uh, Google AdSense. This is display advertising. This mostly applies to uh, 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 informational websites. Uh, this is where you just have uh, ads from Google learning on your website and you are paid per impression or per click. Uh, but for most of the niche sites, you shall be featuring products. So you ha you'll have to apply to affiliate programs. N for example, Amazon Associates, there is Share Sale, Jumia, the other year started uh, Jumia Affiliate and Tirimol Affiliate, if your website is targeting local traffic. Uh, the other thing you can do, you can do uh, product adverts. People can uh, actually sponsor some of your posts and pay you. The other thing uh, you can do product sales, maybe you are a manufacturer, or maybe you do sales. So, and you uh, you can just feature your products and sell them from your blog after you start ranking. So this is an image of one of my earliest, uh, uh, an image from Amazon, Amazon Associates. You can see the number of clicks you are getting, the products you have sold, the commission you have sold. This is one of my uh, one of my first uh, niche sites. I started it. Uh, actually, I have not been. Uh, long in this area. I started uh, sometimes October last year. Uh, you have to take some time before you start making money because there is what we call Google search box. Your blog is usually uh, like uh, affected. It doesn't rank well in the first like three months <coughs> unless you are very lucky. So after like three months I started making for example uh, around $48. Uh, after another two months I was making around uh, $631. And uh, that was in March, in one of the 
one of the sites. And since then, it has been growing twice, thrice, and so forth. So the challenges in this area, uh, <laughs> one of the biggest challenges is what we call Google penalties. Google is always upgrading it, its algorithm. So uh, uh, now and then you shall be having, for example, in August, they had what we called, uh, what's called the Google Medic. It was affecting uh, sites uh, measuring in uh, um, medic niche and uh, finance, what they call uh, your rifle, or your money. <laughs> yeah, so it's what that means is that uh, uh, you'd rather, you know, some people are just there to make money. For example, somebody is not a doctor and he's writing hell article. So if they realize, if the, the bots uh, determine you don't have any uh, credentials and you are doing a, a blog on uh, medical, maybe medical devices or something, uh, you are you are those guys who are getting hit. There are very many uh, 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 algorithm updates that have happened before. There was Penguin, which was looking at uh, uh, duplicate uh, content. And uh, there was also the another one on keyword density. So don't stuff your articles with keywords. Uh, actually, some people recommend you to have a keyword density of between 2 and 3%. There's also um, negative SEO. Actually, one of my sites was hit by negative SEO. So don't go revealing your uh, niche to, all, to everyone because not everyone has good intentions. So some people can send uh, some uh, spammy links, for example, from XX related websites, and those will, of course, uh, negatively affect your site. The other challenge is cost of some extra services. Uh, one of those extra services can be, for example, uh, expired domains. To get a very good expired domain, maybe with very authoritative links, not all links are equal. For example, links from such uh, websites like BBC carry a lot of weight. One link from BBC is, is maybe more powerful than uh, 15 links from local blogs. So getting uh, an expired domain with very authoritative links can be expensive, maybe costing even uh, up to $10,000 or uh, around there. So uh, that can be a challenge for beginners. But you don't have to worry. You can just start with the basics. You just have hosting, uh, which for example, will cost around uh, maybe $70 per year, domain $10. So with around $100, you, you, you can actually start uh, a niche website and then start uh, growing day by day.